Hi again. Before starting this lecture, if you're not subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button to stay updated with all our upcoming lessons, tips, and tricks about mastering the Soroban. Don't forget to join our community on social media. Welcome to the third chapter. This is the most important part of the course, where we will learn the essential techniques used in Soroban. Mastering these techniques will help you acquire proficiency, speed, and accuracy while performing arithmetic on the Soroban. So let's get started. Performing addition on the Soroban require mastering four rules. 1. The diamond rule. 2. The neighbor rule. 3. The precious rule. 4. The fingers rule. You probably have heard about other techniques used in Soroban. These are mine, I inspired from the Japanese method and made some little changes by leaning on the physiognomic differences between Oriental and Occidental kids. But don't worry, the differences are very tiny. In this lecture, we will talk about the diamond rule. So, get you abacus ready to practice while learning. While teaching kids, it's always a good practice to use concrete objects to make them understand easily. In this stage, I use rings as beads on the soroban. As you see, the upper ring is different from the lower rings, it has a beautiful diamond on it. That's why I named this rule, the diamond rule. Now, let's understand this rule. Assuming we have this operation. 4 plus 1. Activate 4 lower beads. Then add 1 lower bead. Wait. There's no lower bead to add. What should I do? Here comes the exchange time. The diamond ring has the value of five little rings. So, we're gonna borrow it to complete the operation. Add the diamond ring, then subtract four little rings. The exchange formula is, plus one is equal to plus five minus four. And the result is five. Let's see another example. Three plus three. Activate three little rings. Again, we can't find three little rings to add. So, we have to exchange two little rings with the diamond ring. Activate the diamond ring. Then deactivate two little rings. The exchange formula is, plus three equals plus five minus two. And the sum is six. Now the question is, how many little rings should I use to exchange the diamond ring? Well, it depends on the number you need to add. There's four main cases of using the diamond ring. If we need to add one, we have to activate the diamond ring, then deactivate four little rings. The exchange formula is, plus one equals plus five minus four. If we need to add two, we have to activate the diamond ring, then deactivate three little rings. The exchange formula is, plus two equals plus five minus three. If we need to add three, we have to activate the diamond ring, then deactivate two little rings. The exchange formula is, plus three equals plus five minus two. If we need to add 4, we have to activate the diamond ring, then deactivate one little ring. The exchange formula is, plus 4 equals plus 5 minus 1. These little helpers are called, complements. So, the complement of 1 is 4. The complement of 2 is 3. The complement of 3 is 2. And the complement of 4 is 1. Now get ready to play with the Soroban. Let's calculate 4 plus 2. I'll give you 5 seconds. Try to do it fast. Great! The right answer is Activate 4 little rings. Activate the diamond ring. Then deactivate 3 little rings. The sum is 6. Practice is the key to master these rules, try to perform calculations using the Soroban. You can start with operations of one digit, for example, 3 plus 2, or 4 plus 4. Then jump to operation with two digits, like 42 plus 34, or 12 plus 44. Then add more and more digits as you can. I'll leave you some links in the description below of activities about the diamond rule. Feel free to check them out. You can also refer to our educational book which contains hundreds of exercises and explanations, 
and also QR codes to activities related to the topic. If you're stuck somehow, leave me a comment, I'll be very happy to answer your questions. You can also join our community on the social media. I hope you enjoyed this lecture. In the next lecture, we will talk about the neighbor rule. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next lecture.